Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we're gonna be talking about five really great ways to make money in RDR2 that you might not necessarily have known about or even thought to do. So these five money-making opportunities are all robberies. There's five types in games and we're gonna be discussing all of them. So let's start with the first one today and that is home robberies. So all home robberies with the exception of one are available from the beginning of chapter two. And with each house, your primary objective is to recover a stash and then make your escape. But some of these assignments will also give you the opportunity to revisit the building on multiple occasions to continue their side stories and potentially claim additional loot. Now, some of the robberies we're gonna be talking about today are time sensitive robberies for whatever reason. We're not gonna go into the details of why they might be time sensitive. Like for example, this one I'm doing with Sean, it can only be done in chapter two or in chapter three. And it is pretty straightforward. You basically just get a tip from an in-game character. You then go to a special home or cabin or some place that might be isolated and you ultimately just do the home robbery. And they do have really good loot, not only in terms of just straight cash that you can take, but also other things like jewelry, gold bars, gold nuggets. In this case, in the house I was robbing, there was actually a rare weapon in there, and that was the double action revolver. Now, I'm sure some of you guys might have that by default because of the challenges you did in Grand Theft Auto Online, but there's still a lot of other opportunities that are very, very similar to this in the home robberies. So there's actually seven of these in total that you can actually do, so plenty of opportunities for you to ultimately rob these homes and get lots of money. The second opportunity is shop or business robberies. So I'm not talking about robbing stores, just going in there and you know pointing a gun at the guy at the register. There are some stores that have stories to tell and additional rewards for us to claim too. Now, in each instance, you're going to have to investigate certain clues. And once you have enough information, you can actually hold up the store owner and reveal their secret. Like, for example, this doctor in Valentine, if you actually notice that there's like a mysterious metal back door, well, you can actually start a robbery of the Valentine doctor that reveals he has a business going on in the back that's producing a lot of money. So what you would do is you would go into the shop, you would rob the individual, and then you would hit up on the D-pad and it, they will always lead you to the secret area or back room. In this instance, with the Valentine doctor, there was cash lying all over the place. There's actually a safe in the back too, so if you brought dynamite, you could actually blow that up. And there's also a rare weapon in this instance as well, Schofield's revolver, which is another great gun that you definitely need to pick up. There's a lot of other locations as well, like the St. Denis Gunsmith, the Rhodes Gunsmith, the Strawberry General Store, this doctor's office, uh, and more. So they're really good opportunities for you to do, and it's a lot more lucrative than just going to a store and holding someone up. These have backstories to them, and their loot and reward is much better. So it's something that you definitely want to take advantage of. The next type of robbery is the stage coach robbery. Now, you can rob any coach you run into during your travels, although you shouldn't expect any significant profit from this at first. After you complete the Spines of America in Chapter 2, it can become more lucrative from that point forward, as you can take any stolen coach to the wagon fence at Emerald Ranch. Now, once you complete Friends in Very Low Places, a mission in Chapter 3, you can additionally unlock six coach robbery missions, and it always consists of two steps. Your first step is to obtain a tip from a post office clerk willing to sell you the information. There are two such discouraged workers, each leading to three different missions for a total of six. Second, you need to open your satchel and read the corresponding note. This will reveal the mission details and the coach's location on your map. And from there, it's very, very simple. You just go to the location and you basically just follow like all the prompts on the screen, like whether it's robbing the coach, getting it to stop, stealing the stuff from the back without being detected. All the missions are similar, just slightly different, and you will end up with really good gear on the back. You're gonna find cash, you're gonna find jewelry, you're gonna find rare tonics and potions that you uh, would probably want on your travel. So this is something you should totally do. Again, there's six of them. I would take advantage of all of them. 
They're really, really easy and uh, it's a great way to make some fast cash in RDR2. Our next type of robbery is probably the most lucrative, but also probably the riskiest as well, and that is train robberies. So just like coaches, you are free to rob trains that you run into with your travels, a feature that is unlocked after completing Pouring Forth Oil, a mission during chapter two. Now, the following tips are going to be pretty helpful for robbing trains. Number one, you can board a train that you intend to rob in two ways. The first option is to jump on the train as you ride alongside it. You can press square or X when the corresponding prompt appears on your screen, and then you can loot the train while it's still moving. But it usually makes sense to stop it first to avoid any chances of running into the law. Now, to do so, you need to head to the engine car and threaten or incapacitate the driver. Now, you can also climb aboard the train when it's stopped at a station, but the drawback here is it'll expose you to witnesses and make it hard to remain unnoticed. Now, trains are typically guarded by a handful of men that you'll need to dispose of, and if you throw one of these men off of the moving train and he doesn't die, be aware that he's likely to report your crime. Now, forcing a train to stop away from populated areas is always best as it decreases the law response should a witness report the robbery. And you must know that there are two types of trains. There's one train that you want to go for in particular, and that is a passenger train. Passenger trains tend to be more interesting as they feature more chest and in addition to passengers that you can hold up, threaten, or beat as you can relieve them of their valuables. A freight train is going to have a few collectibles and generally a single chest. Those are going to be the ones that you want to avoid. Now, I've talked about my favorite location to rob a train in-game, and that is on the long bridge above Riggs Station. It's impossible for the law to get you there. Uh, now, I don't know if any passenger trains go over this or if you would have to get on one randomly, but it's a location that I really, really like to use. And our final robbery today is only going to be available if you have the special or ultimate edition of the game. So sorry to those of you guys that have the regular version. This one is not going to be available for you. It is a bank robbery. It is the only free roam bank robbery in the game that you can do that's not connected to the story, which is really cool. So in order to access this, you have to be in chapter four. You then want to talk to Charles at your camp around noon. This is the time in which I typically got this to work the best. Basically, there's going to be a prompt on the screen. You can say, Charles, do you want to rob a bank? And you will start the robbery. Now, it's a pretty simple and straightforward mission. It's actually going to take us to Rhodes, a town I'm sure you guys are all familiar with right now. It involves using dynamite to essentially blow out the side which is really cool. You jump inside and all the safes are destroyed. I had a little bit of trouble with this at first because I wasn't too sure what to do, but basically you just want to jump inside and you want to loot everything that you see. It's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Now from there, you're just going to have to escape and that's easy as well and then return back to your camp. Now the money with this was not incredible for like me personally, but it was good for the camp. You know, you got a lot of money for the camp and the gang obviously got its share. And it was a pretty cool side mission and it's the only one of its kind, which obviously makes it really cool because it's the only time in the game you're gonna be able to do something like that. So that right there is five incredibly easy ways to make quick money in Red Dead Redemption 2, the five robberies in game. They're all really fun to do. They have like their own side stories that go along with it. So I thought that this was really fun and it's sort of different from just like going into a store and robbing it. And it gives you a sort of a change of pace to the story mode missions. But that's all the information I've got for you guys in this video today. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave a like rating on this video. That'd be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.